Agarose gel electrophoresis is used to separate DNA according to its size. An agarose gel contains small pores which act like a molecular sieve. A DNA sample is loaded into a well of the gel and when a current is applied, the DNA will migrate through the gel towards the positive electrode since the phosphate groups of the DNA structure give it an overall negative charge. As the gel acts like a molecular sieve, smaller DNA fragments will travel further through the gel than the larger fragments. This can be used to identify the size of the fragments in the sample. The gel is prepared to a defined concentration given as percentage agarose, which is in grams per 100 millilitres of TAE or TBE buffer. The higher the percentage, the smaller the pores that are formed and so the smaller the DNA fragments that can be separated. Here we are preparing 100 millilitres of a 1% agarose gel, so 1 gram of agarose is dissolved in 100 millilitres of TAE buffer. Once the solution is prepared, the agarose needs to be dissolved in the buffer. This is done by heating the solution using a microwave for a few minutes. Take care not to boil the solution and keep checking every 20 seconds or so. Once the agarose is dissolved in the buffer, it needs to be allowed to cool to about 60 degrees before it is poured. Pouring it while it is too hot may cause the gel caster to buckle. Cool it too far and the gel will set in the flask. Ensure you are wearing the heat proof glove before removing the hot flask. While the gel cools, prepare the gel casting stand. The casting stand needs to be sealed off at each end using tape so that the gel won't run out. To seal the casting stand, tear off a length of tape and attach it securely along the open edge of the stand, ensuring that some excess is taken around the edges to give a good seal. Press along the edges firmly to ensure a tight seal all round. Repeat this process along the other open edge. Once the gel is cooled, Ethidium bromide is added to the gel. Carefully add the ethidium and bromide to the cooling agro solution and swirl to mix. This is a carcinogen, so immediately dispose of the tip in the sharps bin. Ethidium bromide will intercalate between the DNA and can be visualised under UV illuminations, therefore allowing the DNA bands to be visualised after the gel has been run. When the gel is cool enough, Carefully pour the solution into the casting stand. Do this slowly to avoid forming bubbles in the gel and also so that you can stop if the gel appears to be leaking from the stand. Once the gel is poured, a plastic comb is inserted into the gel. This comb will form wells into which the DNA can be loaded once the gel has hardened. Leave the gel to set at room temperature this may take 20 to 30 minutes. Once the gel is set, prepare the gel running tank by filling the chambers with the running buffer. This will either be the TAE or TBE buffer used to prepare the gel. Take care not to overfill the tank. Remove the tape and dispose of it in the ethidium bromide waste and then carefully place the gel in the tank. Top up with buffer if necessary there should be a thin layer of liquid covering the surface of the gel. Remove the comb only when the gel is inside the tank. Now the gel is ready to load. Your DNA samples should include a loading buffer which contains a dye to allow the progress of the gel to be tracked and a density reagent to help the sample settle into the well. Here, the first two samples loaded are marker lanes. These are solutions of DNA fragments of known sizes. Draw the sample into a small pipette tip and carefully insert the tip below the surface of the liquid, just over the well you want to load it into. You may find it useful to steady your pipetting hand with your other hand. Slowly and carefully, Expel the solution from the tip into the well, taking care not to move the tip around 
otherwise you may break the walls of the well. Repeat this process until you have loaded all the markers and samples into the wells. Once the markers and samples are loaded, place the lid on the gel tank and connect the power leads to the power pack, ensuring these are connected in the correct order, red to red and black to black. Turn on the power pack. Press set until the display shows enter voltage. Use the up or down arrow to set the voltage required, in this case 100 volts. Press the set button until the display shows enter time. Use the up or down arrow to set the required time, in this case 45 minutes. Press run. The display will change to run and the voltage will increase to the level set. The display will also begin to count down from the time set. The gel is now left to run to allow the DNA samples to migrate through the gel, separating according to their size. This can be monitored by observing the migration of the coloured dye in the loading buffer. The migration shown here will take approximately 45 minutes. Once the gel has run, turn off the power supply. Remove the leads and carefully remove the lid from the gel tank and place it on the bench. You should now remove the gel, tipping it slightly to drain the excess buffer whilst ensuring you do not allow it to slide off its casting stand and then place it in a suitable container. You should now take the gel to the imaging system. Carefully slide the gel onto the plate. Push in the drawer and close the door. Press UV on the display. This will then show an image of your gel. The DNA bands are now visualised by UV illumination, showing bright bands indicating the presence of a DNA fragment. The gel image can then be recorded for further analysis. Here you can see how the smaller DNA fragments have migrated further down the gel than the larger ones in the marker lanes and that the DNA in the samples is clearly visible. Used gels should be disposed of in an appropriate ethidium bromide waste container and not in a standard bin.